So hello and welcome back yet again to another Exploring Kalmandor video. I mean, we are going to eventually explore everywhere in Azeroth, but we are currently on the continent of Kalmandor, and yet again we are exploring with the lovely Onyx, who is going to take us through Ajara. Ajara? Ajara? Who knows? I am the worst person on earth when it comes to pronouncing anything, so, you know, that is just what it is. And we're starting out right here in the Ogremar rear gate, so as you can see, that is quite the imposing structure. Not too much interesting going on here, a couple of your basic intro to the zone quests, although if you do take these quests, your character will be phased until you complete them. So, little interesting fun facts that I didn't actually know. So as we exit the Ogremar rear gate, we are going to be confronted by tons and tons of these weakened moss hoof stags and some runaway shredders because the goblins are being very goblin-y and having all sorts of problems with their shredders. I feel like that is just a very goblin thing. You're going to go down here into the mountain foot strip mine, and it's just your basic mine. You've got a couple basic quests. There's nothing really exciting that I can think about that is in this area, but I do know that there are some fun quests where if you are on the Horde side, you get to kill all sorts of Night Elves because, of course, for a long time, Ajara was not really a zone that had much going on. I remember back in Wrath of the Lich King coming to this zone with my Alliance character mostly because there were some leatherworking quests back here. And that was mostly what I came to this zone for, and I think it was a semi-high level zone back then. But there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of a reason to come. So with the Cataclysm, they did a giant revamp on this zone, and it now hosts what is essentially the Goblin Main City, which is a place we will get to. But first, we are here in Lake Minar. It was once home to one of the only enclaves of the Blue Dragonflight outside of Northrend. Now, unfortunately, there are no Blue Dragons here, but you do do a little bit of surveying and learn the history through questing. Coming right up ahead, and don't worry, we will get, get on the fun horde... Uh, roller coaster. That's basically what I treat it as. It is a great fun. But we're gonna follow it all the way to the very end to one of my favorite little places and that is the secret lab. The quests in the secret lab are so much fun and um, as you can see everything in the secret lab is kind of sort of on fire. We've got baby raptors in cages and if you don't mind the fact that your house is on fire, there are some actually really nice areas in here. Don't mind the fact that when you walk in, your feet will set on fire. Nothing wrong here, just goblin technology. You've got some neat little teleporters in this room. You've got a big engine that is slightly worrisome, but you know, no big deal. Like I said, as long as you don't mind the fact that your house is on fire, there's actually a couple really cute little goblin houses in this area. And there's even a couple that are, on my estimation, as actual genuine houses. Now, over here in the secret lab, you have a couple of problems. The first problem is Subject 4. Subject 4 is a raptor that has been a um, little mutated by the goblins, you know, no big deal, but uh, he, he would like to destroy all of humanity. You can play with the, the toys here. All right, so they're not toys, but I consider everything a toy in WoW. Um, 
but you can do all the quests and take out subject for make things a little bit better in this area now the big boss of the area he's behind this door but he has written a sign that says no one is home right now come back later just like the boss when when stuff goes on fire he's just gonna hide but this is probably one of the nicest houses like i said if you don't mind the fact that your house is on fire this is a pretty great house here you've got your astroturf back here nice little writing desk cute little bed chained to the wall and you know a little bit of plant life so very cool house and it's on fire that's okay now you also have this cliff giant here he is really fun and i'm pretty sure he is involved in a quest to get azurite which are these spiffy little minerals that are all over the cliffs and the goblins wanted them because they were some sort of a source of unimaginable power but as you go through the quest you find out that azurite is actually just it, it's just cliff giant poop so this could be the very first poop quest that you encounter as a horde player even if you don't find out that it's poop for a long time now this right here is the Southern Rocketway Terminus, and it's also got a little flight point and some really fun little cannons over here at the end. Now we're not riding the, the rocket just yet, because we're going to venture a little bit further out. We're going to go through the storm cliffs that are crawling with Naga, and over here to the Raven... Ravenholt? Ravencrest? I'll find out when I get there. Because, of course, I don't... I don't do good at uh, scripting things. But this is the Ravencrest Monument. And there's been a lot of speculation about this monument. Um, it was thought that it could be a monument to a famous Ravencrest in-game. Except the Ravencrest that they thought it could be the monument for is a dude, and this is very definitely a female night elf uh, face. So it's kind of hard to say who this Ravencrest monument is meant to be representing, but it is a very cool, very broken monument nonetheless. Now, if you are a Alliance player, this area actually has one of the cutest little houses that we'll go check out, even if I do have to kill everybody that's in it, because of course they're Alliance. But we're going to head out onto the Bay of Storms first and just kind of run around out here. This is not an overly exciting area, except it does have a couple of really cool little things. I feel like when they did the revamp, they really did a good job of trying to put a little bit of something in it. Now, I don't remember what this platform is for, so if anybody knows if this is like connected to a quest, let me know. It's been a while since I've quested through Ajara. But I saw that and I was like, that is actually kind of cool. I went swimming all around, couldn't find anything really cool under the water, but that was just a really cool platform that I found. And I was like, hey, that's kind of neat. Also kind of neat right up here is this giant, I think it's a Threshlodon, but I don't think we've ever seen one in game this big. I mean, this dude's skull is bigger than Onyx. I don't know that I would necessarily want to meet him when he was alive. But he is sort of an important clue that you're getting close to something that is kind of cool. So you just keep on going past the ruined reaches, past the Ravencrest Monument. And like I said, if you are an Alliance player, this is a much easier thing to get to. But even as a Horde player, it's not too bad. It is one of the 
what I used to think was very few gnome houses in the game, but I'm finding more and more of them the more I go around looking. So let's just run in here. We might have to kill kill this guy who is a little offended that we're in his house, but it's a really cute little house. You come up here upstairs and you've got three little gnome-sized, or if you're a goblin, goblin-sized beds. Not exactly something that you can sleep on as a tall player, but what do you think, Onyx? You gonna take a little nap? She's like, I fit on it. I just have to curl up a little bit. So yeah, if you are a no gnome or a goblin, this is kind of a cute little house. And I also found a giant laxative. That's always exciting. It's a purchase order. It says, Attention Mrs. Gadget Spring. The industrial strength laxative agent that you requested is enclosed. My condolences on the fate of Mr. Blimlow Gadget Spring after his encounter with the cliff giant. I'm curious why you're opting for a laxative in effort to recover him as opposed to some sort of vomit inducing agent. It seems to me that you are doing Mr. Gadget Spring a disservice, but good luck with your endeavor. <laughs> so it sounds like the, the gnome woman wants to get her husband back the hard way. That uh, sounds like there is a story involved there. Sorry about that, Mr. Zapper Gnome, but you shouldn't have aggroed on me. Now, there's one other really fun thing that is just out this way, and hopefully I can find it. All right, so you leave the gnome house, go past this nifty island, and look for the wreckage on the surface. And when you find it, you're gonna see that there is something kind of cool about this wreckage. Definitely looks like something is happening because the water is all bubbling. So we're gonna go down and it is kind of deep. So if you have something to help with water breathing, go ahead and take that because it's always fun to poke around in the uh, ship that I found down here. It is right on the edge of the fatigue zone, so watch it while you're exploring. And I did a little research, and this was actually part of a quest back in Classic, and there were actually people on board it back in Classic. Now, the people are gone, unfortunately, but you can still poke around in this really cool ship down here. And it's kind of a copy, if you look around in it, of the ships that are in the um, Cataclysm Zone that everybody hated that I can't remember the name of right now because that is uh, Vashira. It is kind of like the ship that you spawn into in Vashir. So I thought that was kind of interesting. There's nothing really in this ship. It's just kind of a very cool little ship that has air bubbles in it. Unfortunately, the air bubbles do not allow your character to breathe, unlike some of the bubbles that you'll find around some areas in the game. So there we go. Now we just have to get back up and check out this bubbling surface of the water. I just thought it was really neat. Like, I kind of wish that the people were still on board and that the quests were still there, but, you know, I guess when we have some things progress, other things get left behind. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to take a little bit of a ride and go all the way to the other side of Ajara and start on that side and work our way back towards the middle again. All right, we have made it all the way back to the Southern Rocketway Terminus. 
Now, if you do not have a flying mount, never fear. They have a nice little elevator there to get you up to the top. And I'm even going to go into first person for this just because I feel like this ride is very much worth it. So we're just going to talk to the rocket jockey here. And we would like to go all the way to the Northern Rocketway Terminus. All right, let's put it into first person mode and go on the Horde's fantastic roller coaster across the Jara. You know, I might not always approve of everything that the goblins have done in this area. Woo, we just ran into a cliff crasher. But I really do love the rocket. And you know what? I don't know if Onyx here has ever ridden it all the way from one side to the next, so I guess we'll find out. I think the only thing that would make this uh, roller coaster rocket terminal better would be if the goblins would have put a nice loop-de-loop -loop in the middle. That would have been, like, just about as good as it can get. But it's a really fun way to get across a really big zone. There we go. We're going past the ruins. Don't worry, we'll go into those in a little while. Gotta love that goblin technology. I mean, every once in a while, your rocket might kind of fly off the back, especially when you're going off of these big areas, but not always. And we're almost to the end of the road. Just got to go through the Darnassian base camp, back up, maybe jump a little cliff here. Ooh, we've slowed down. All right, everybody hold on to your butts. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that was no problem at all. I don't think that this uh, rocket has flown off the tracks once yet. I'm almost sad. This felt like a much safer ride than it usually does. And here we are, safely at the end of the road. Oops. Our rocket might be falling off, but you know, goblin technology is not always perfect. <laughs> so that is one of the most fun things I can think of to do in the genre. Now, if you are a low level, it will dump you off, and these Ravagers might actually attack you. It is a possibility, but you know, what is life without a little risk? You'll also be dumped down here in Sable Ridge, where you have a lot of the Black Dragon Flight just kind of doing their thing over here. So be a little bit cautious, but other than that, it's kind of a fun ride. Now, one of the reasons to come this way is actually hidden up in the hills. There is an achievement tied to doing these trials here. There are three trials, and they are offered by a mage who has a really cool secret tower, and that is where we are headed next. Along the way to our next destination, let's all just pause for a moment and just appreciate the height of that waterfall. It actually goes up into winter spring, which we'll get to eventually. I just really like that. Like, would this not just be one of the best spots to just chill out and have a picnic? <laughs> I always think about things like that as I am exploring around in the game. You know, it's funny, I, I am not a PvPer. I'm not a raider. I like dungeons best when I can solo them, but the exploration and the questing in World of Warcraft has always kind of been what's kept me subscribed for as long as it has. I just really get a big kick out of this game. Always have. Possibly always will. Alright, as we are flying over here, we have the Black Maw Hold. And if you go down into the Black Maw Hold, which is also known as Bear's Head because, well... Oh! Hang on. 
Well, that's what you get for doing this on patch day. But um, it's also known as Bear's Head because obviously the entrance to their hold is a grizzly bear head. I just thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, if you go inside, it is basically the same layout as the Timber Maw hold up in Winter Spring. It's just a whole heck of a lot more hostile. Now, as we leave the Black Maw hold area, we're going to come up on something that honestly, I don't think I ever really knew was in this zone. So right here, when you hit the area called Bear's Head, you will find a very bored, very, very bored Blood Elf who is just sitting here in the grass, being all Blood Elfy and bored. Glory when you talk to, to him, he says, There was a time when I could ask whatever I wished from those who sought out my master, but now he takes pretty much anyone in as an apprentice, and they can pass through his portals all they please. It's upsetting to me, but I do not question his orders. I can only take enjoyment in making fun of the ridiculous clothes that you wear, or the pathetic look on your face. But even that bores me. Even this rambling bores me. Go. Be gone. Share your depressing sense of style with someone else. You know, that's rich, buddy. Your clothes aren't all that great either. Keep your wits about So, you used to have to fight him, from what I was reading. And after you fought and defeated him, you would be teleported to this mage tower. Which is actually kind of awesome, and I don't know that I ever knew that this was here. But I quickly had a great time running around and checking out all of these apprentices to this Xylem character. So we're gonna go inside and there's a bunch of humorous little things like if you examine these boots that are on fire, these boots look like they were struck with an incredible amount of arcane energy. The name Heinrich is inscribed on the inside of each boot. Now I don't know who Heinrich was but um I don't think he made it, but we're going to go into Xylem's tower. It's got a nice little skull up there. You've got this absolutely cool little portal over here that doesn't seem to go anywhere. But more importantly, you have Tex Votricoil. What's up? And when you talk to him, he will send you or sell you it's a little expensive, it's 5,000 gold, depending on, you know, what your gold situation is. Kalithia? Kyl Kalthia? I don't know. Kay's Haunted Locket. So, if you buy it, right which I did earlier, and use it, it turns you into this very cool night elf with a very cool design on your face and the disguise lasts for 30 minutes and I'm pretty sure it lasts through combat although we'll, we'll test that out but in the meantime let's go to the top of this tower and see what's up top they do have a lot of the enchanted brooms I love those I think that's one of my favorite things about the blood elf starting zone You've got a couple of apprentices. I wonder if I sit in this apprentice's chair. Oh, I'm just sitting on him. Don't mind me, just sitting on you. I don't know if you know this, but there is a spot in your garrison where if you go and you sit down and someone else is in the chair, they get up and they, they actually act, act completely huffy. So yeah, we just have, he's pulling the um, Caligos trick and he has just got his mirror images all over his tower. He also has another apprentice up here at the top. It definitely seems like Archmage Xylem is a busy dude. Like I said, he has a couple of different trials. There is an achievement tied to it. I don't know if I've ever done it. I don't think I have. Mostly because I just didn't, I guess. One of these days I'll get around to it. 
I do go on kicks where I just go crazy into achievements. Now I can definitely see since I just took damage that taking damage does not break this disguise. So that is good to know. All right, well, we are going to depart. Thank you, Archmage Xylem, but we are going to leave you now with all of your crazy trials and we are going to go on to one of my favorite spots in this zone and that is Gallywix's Pleasure Palace. Gallywix thinks a little bit about himself because he had his head sculpted into the side of this mountain and made a golf course and resort. It's actually a lot of fun. I think the first time I ever came to this was when I was doing the Rogue Order Hall, Hall quests in Legion. Until then, I don't know if I even knew that this was here. You can tell that I have gotten way more serious about exploring than I used to. I used to find cool stuff, but now it's sort of a passion of mine. So you go here. You've got a lot of palace mooks because this is Gallywix's Pleasure Palace. And his Pleasure Palace is basically the same layout as a goblin hotel that you would find in the goblin starter area of Kazan. With a little less Chinese food because here we've got a big old roast pig. Because of course we do. And it is the second place that has a really good, like, actual bedroom. In fact, this is probably one of the best beds in the game. It's a little gaudy, but you know what? That's okay. I kind of like it. So we've got Gallywix. We've got his pleasure palace here. He's got a golf course. But if golf is not your thing, well... You know, he's got a little bit more. We've got some pink lawn flamingos over here because everybody needs a pink lawn flamingo. And right inside here, you have a goblin sauna. So that is... Actually, I think this is the only sauna I've ever seen in the game. So I gotta love that. You've got your goblin pinup girl on the wall. And then if the you get a little too hot in the sauna see here let me get on this you can get lifted up and go off the high dive yay now you're swimming there's also a nice big hot tub over here I mean what more could you possibly want I like the steam pools but you know the steam pools just have a natural hot tub this one's got smoke and probably oil spewing out of it all over which is exciting Plus, you've got these nice little umbrellas. You've got your tiki bar up here. Everything you could possibly want. And don't worry, Alliance players. Uh, as long as you stay away from the palace mooks, you'll be fine. I've taken many an Alliance player over here. And of course, we're going to follow Gallywix's line of sight right out here to one of my least favorite archaeology dig sites. Least favorite because everything down here is hostile, even when you're a high level and you can kill them all easily. They're just everywhere and they respawn constantly and they don't give any loot. But it's all connected to a rather fun goblin quest that you can do. Also, we're going to pop our heads in here. Don't mind the fact that all of a sudden you're going to have a bunch of high-level Naga after you. No big deal. But you can run around in here. It is basically a copy of a Night Elf Temple to a Loon, which is not only very cool, I mean, it's kind of been taken over by Nagas, but you know, details. But I do like, and I think that there is a quest tied to it, I do like this stone that is right here in the middle. Very cool. Got a cool shiny rock in it. What more could a girl want? Obviously, the only other thing a girl might want 
is to go and check out the Goblin City. Also, if you look up here on my mini-map, you can see that I do have a dig site here, and I am not going to do it because, darn it, I really hate that dig site. Only because it takes forever. It's a rather big dig site, and it's got um, annoying Naga all over it, so it's usually one I skip. But we are going to head out across the Shattered Strand and land here in... I don't think it's called New Kazan, but darn it, it should be. And it is the Goblin Main City. I don't feel like many people come here and just hang out, which is too bad because they actually put a lot of effort into this. You got... You've got your fishing supplies, you've got a couple of boats, you've got your, your flight point, and then you have several, not every one of these houses can you actually go into, but several of them you can. And you've got a bunch of AWOL orc soldiers that are just doing a little dance out here, because of course they are. I mean, who wouldn't? And you know... You can come in here, you've got your cook, he is cooking all the things, including takeout Chinese, because for whatever reason, Blizzard has decided that goblins love Chinese takeout. I mean, who doesn't love Chinese takeout? I love Chinese takeout. And you've got a crab just hanging out. I don't think he realizes that he's probably what's for dinner. But yeah, you know, if you don't mind the pollution, goblin towns are fantastic. I kind of really like them. They, they definitely make me smile. They have a lot of liberal use of astroturf. And there's treasure everywhere. Treasure and bombs. I feel like that is just the goblin aesthetic. Treasure and bombs. And you know, honestly... I don't know why the goblins and gnomes are always fighting, because they have a lot in common, other than their height. But we're going to go in here, we are going to check out yet another, another inn. This one has got all sorts of plans, because if you didn't know, the giant cannon on top of Bilgewater Harbor is actually aiming at Stormwind. So this is supposed to be Stormwind here, and, uh, you know, maybe one day they'll, they'll actually bomb Stormwind. There is also another copy of the bedroom, except this one has a profession trainer and vendor in the top of it. And a few more AWOL grunts, because of course, you know, if you're going to be AWOL, be AWOL in a Goblin City, because it's a lot of fun. So, speaking of the giant gun, let's go up and check it out up here. I mean, you know, if I were in Stormwind, I might be at least a little bit nervous about this ginormous, ginormous gun. And of course, you have your little lookout tower here. I don't know if you can actually look through and see Stormwind. I think at one point you could, which just made it even better. But this is the, the telescope. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can still look through and see Stormwind, which is too bad because that would be hilarious. All right. Other than that, there is not a whole heck of a lot more to show you in Ajara. I am probably missing some things. I'm always missing some things. So if you have any distinct memories that you have attached to a jar, oh, there it is. All right, let's zoom in and see what we're aiming at. Yep, that is definitely Stormwind up there. Well, it's Goblin Tech, so I don't think that the people of Stormwind have too much to worry about just yet. Anyway. That is where we are going to leave it for now. I think next week 
we are going to be moving on over into Ashenvale, which means the return of Beryl. I mean, Onyx will be coming along to help check out all of the horde encampments, but Ashenvale is a mixed area, so I'm going to need both of my sisters. So, as always, thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I hope that maybe you saw something new. I mean, I never knew that there was a mage tower with a toy inside. So, anyway, thank you. As always, I do appreciate it, and I will see you next week when we explore Ashenvale.